this is going to be my longest ride of the year. gravel event. Fred training I suppose. This is going to be the longest ride. I think this is ride six outdoors this year so hopefully it will be kind to me and the weather will brighten up a bit because it is pretty dreary out there. Right so if you're a follower of my channel sorry it's been such a long time and um, as you all know I've been training or supposedly was training hard for a sub seven Fred. Well that's been binned. I've been focusing on other things that will be in a future video or three because there's been a few things going on. Having never done a glorious gravel event before, and to be honest with you, it's been probably two decades since I did any off-road event at all. Everything that I've done in the last few years has been sporties, which have obviously been on the road, on a road bike. So this will be my first event on my gravel bike. The first event off-road for a very, very long time. I'm not really sure what to expect. I've read all the blurb. So uh, yeah, so this is the Glorious Gravel, Lancashire, I think it is. We're heading to Gisborne Forest, 20 minutes away. And it stopped raining, yay. Right, made it into the forest. It is slightly clearer, not as wet. Uh, the start time for today for the longer ride is um, eight o'clock, in between eight o'clock and 8.45. 45 minute window to get all the riders off 45 minute window for the longer riders longer riders taller riders or the people who are going the furthest um, to set off and the people who are doing the shorter ride they have up until half nine i believe until they need to be set off so over stocks reservoir which you'll find on the map when you're looking for gisborne Okay, so one thing 
I did do, I downloaded the route to my Wahoo and I pressed go and when it started it was fine and then in a gizman it wasn't and now I'm not sure because I'm by myself if I'm on the right route. So hopefully there'll be some nice signs and I'll be able to see, follow the arrows. So no signs here. But thank goodness there's an arrow just over there. So rough that people were walking. Oh, 26 miles in, still not eating anything. Feel all right, and it's not raining. Bravo. <laughs> So riding one of the open road bits now. It's uh, probably not good, not a good view from where you're looking from, up my nostrils. But it's windy. It's a slow drag to this crest here, and it just went on and on and on. Oh look, it still carries on up there. Looks to. So this event took place in early May this year and um, the weather could have been great but unfortunately it wasn't. It was damp and windy at times and I did get a little bit cold. I did have all the right gear and the event organisers did make sure that you left the start with a foil blanket which for obvious reasons being isolated or um, alone on the fells if anything was to happen you do need an extra layer. It was windy and it was damp and it was a little cold and that's why my camera died unfortunately so there's no footage from we're here onwards um Salterfell is amazing I'm going to revisit it. it is really an epic epic road but the cloud was so low and the conditions were so snotty even if it did have a camera it wouldn't really do it any justice so that is somewhere I'm going to go and revisit so anyway the route was great there was a second feed after the first one there at near I think it was near Ostwick um, but the second feed was at Ray where there was a scarecrow festival going on so it was fairly busy um, a pretty damp scarecrow festival and um, so that was a really good feed and then you get up onto the Salterfell road and you head over and following the route that the organisers provided and of course those arrows that you saw. Third and final feed was at Sladeburn which I didn't stop at because according to my Wahoo we were 10 miles from the finish I had enough water and I had a couple of snacks there to get me back um, and by that time I had started eating. So the final push back to Gisborne is mainly on the road and then you do a loop of Gisborne Forest which completely rinses the legs um, as it is quite undulating and there's a few draggy gravel drags um, just to get you back to the finish line but thankfully I've been to Gisborne a few times before so I was aware of the lay of the land and did assume that where the finish was and the, where the, how the route was laid out that I'd just got enough in the legs to get back. The route on my Wahoo came to 64 miles um, which was about right because I thought it was a 60 mile ride so it, it was 7,782 feet of elevation my finishing time was 5 hours and 32 minutes it wasn't a race but if it was I'd have come 25th out of 175 starters on the long route the fastest time was a chap called Barry Rawlinson and his time came in just under 4 hours it was 3 hours and 59 minutes and 4 seconds the organists provide the route of course, you can GP download a GPX file which in my case didn't work um, they provide loads of information leading you up to the event, various emails, there was even a WhatsApp group set up where some of these pictures that you've just seen now the photographs were taken they'd been out the day before and taken a lot of pictures and sort of forewarned the riders which was good and then when you finished there was non-alcoholic lager or beer which I didn't see but maybe I just wanted to get back and get some get cleaned up and get some layers on but uh, yeah I didn't see that uh, but there was um, a wooden little trophy in fact it's here so they just provide you with and it's quite I suppose ethically it's great 
it's made out of wood, it's not just another metal one that gets hung up with all the rest of them. So that was a little memento, which is good to have. So in summary, I loved it, it was a great ride, um, I'll put the route down below, um, so you can just go and have a look at the route or you can go and ride it if necessary. Um, there was no real issues I found with the route at all, I was not I was underprepared, um, I've been low volume riding recently, um, so that's just on me. The fasting thing, which I've said a few times uh, prior to this, um, I got as far as mile 36 without eating any food at all from the previous day, so that was a 14 hour fast. I did 36 miles of riding from approximately 10 past 8ish in the morning. Um, and to be honest with you, the only reason I started eating because I was a pretty pretty miserable because um, I was a bit cold and a bit damp and it was windy and at that point I was by myself riding as well. So really it was just, I didn't feel great so I just sort of cheered myself up with some food and that's something I think Nicky Spinks has said a few times that if you find yourself in the doldrums just get yourself some sugar and get some food. And then I actually started um, moving a bit quicker then. Um, which is good because obviously then I'm starting to process and burn but that's another story for another video so I will look at fasting and intermittent fasting in a future video on this channel but also on my other channel which is in the description below thank you very much for watching if you got this far congratulations if you don't already subscribe do so it is the one free thing you can do to support me and support the channel hit the notification bell that also helps the algorithms if you've done it drop us a message if you want to do it or there's any questions that I've not covered in this short video send us a message in the comment section for this one and there's some Fred stuff coming up so we'll see you next time thanks for watching oh yeah you probably gathered that I'm all croaky and snotty well I'm not sure if that's a result of being cold and miserable but if you watch my series of videos that I've now started trying to do again I've got five days till the Fred and this isn't conducive to a good day out on the bike especially in the Lake District right see you next time